Hello and welcome to the education for your Minecraft Studio to Red Robins Shadow Scene Building USB. I'm Diane and I'm really excited to show you um, a few hints and tips on this USB and we'll start with a bit of the basics because I know there's going to be some new people who have bought Minecraft Studio for the first time. We'll show you how to use the graphics program and um, yeah we'll just make a little bit of a scene and uh, see how we can uh, maximize the use of this artwork. So let's get into the demonstration. We have Minecraft Studio on the computer and we've actually installed the program already. So if I go over to the computer now, we can see that we've got the graphics program. Now the white area in the center on this particular computer is A4. If you're in the States, it may be letter. It can be A5, it can be A3, any size that your printer will take the paper. So we can change this quite easily. If we go into the print tab, we have page size button and the sizes that are available on here are actually determined by the printer that you've actually got installed on your computer. So you can see there we've got all these different ones. So we've got a letter there and we're going to go A4, which is the size that we've got here. So that's how we change the page size to start with. So this actually, this area over here, so we've got the purple area around the side. I like to think of this as my craft desk. So imagine that when you're bringing artwork over from this side here, we're bringing things out of the, um, Maybe you've got them in a filing cabinet, maybe you've got stuff in a drawer. We're going to bring it off, out of the drawer onto our craft desk and we're going to pop it down. The white area is what I would say is my, um, my actual card. So the purple area is my cutting mat and the white area is what's actually going to print. So we can bring anything over that we like and we can pop it anywhere on the page. What is on the white area is what will actually print out when you actually get to that stage. So on the left hand side, we've got all of the files, so you can see those here. But first of all, let's have a look at the tabs at the top. So we have the home tab. And you'll see in here, we've got lots of different um, tools. This is where we find some of the tools for the graphics program. We can open files, save files and print. We can create new files. We've got cut, copy, paste buttons. We've got undo, which is really useful. Um, we've got a grid and a margin and a ruler. And the grid and the ruler will be on when you open the graphics program. It's entirely up to you. It's, it's your, prefer your preference as to whether you work with them on or off. I prefer to work with them off, which makes it a little bit easier for you to see on camera. But we can see there we can have either of them on. We also have a margin, which shows the print margin dependent on the printer that you're actually working with. So this one you can see actually has um, a small print margin around the edge so that I would know to make sure my design is within there, otherwise it would crop off the edge. Um, if I pop the ruler back on, you'll see that we have down at the bottom, we're working in centimeters at the moment, but we can change that to inches if we choose to. And you see the ruler changes in size there. So we can click back to centimeters, entirely up to you which one of those you work in. It will default to centimeters when you open the program, but really easy to change them back. We have lots of other tabs up here, but we'll get into those a little bit later. Let's have a look at some of the artwork that's on this USB. Now with Minecraft Studio, you can install the artwork onto your computer. If you do, it appears in this My Artwork folder here. So you can see here, we've got all of these USBs installed on this computer. And there we've got the Tura Robbins Shadow Scene Building USB Volume 1. I also have the USB in the computer. So you can see here, if you're wanting to work from the USB, so maybe you want to save some space on your computer, and you want to work from the USB. Literally, the USB is plugged into the computer. When I go here, it shows me that I've got the this PC, I've got the local disk drive, which is where your graphics program is installed, but then it also shows me everything else that's on the computer. So if I click on this PC here, you'll see that we've actually got um, some pictures and things on there, which is standard on every computer. And then we've got two USBs plugged into this one, actually. So we've got the shadow scene, which is the one that we're actually wanting to work with today. We've got the artwork folder and the program folder. The program is the folder that you actually use when you want to install the graphics program. So we don't need that one once we're in Minecraft Studio. We need the artwork folder. So you see we've got Tura Robbins Shadow Scene Building. And when we actually click, double click onto a folder down here, it opens up that, uh, that folder. So you can see here, it, the folders are appearing in this box above here. The folder actually has a plus beside it. That means there's more, um, more folders inside, which we can see down here. But if we click on the plus, it actually shows those folders in this box up here. We can click on any one of these um, folders and you'll see that we can see the designs in the box below. I'm just going to scroll down so you can see that we've got six folders on this particular USB. We've got Shadow Scene Builder, we've got Scenes, a Background Builder, Overlays, Sentiments and Textures. What we've also got is a plus beside Shadow Scene Builder and a plus beside Background Builder, which means we've got more elements within those folders. 
So we click on the plus for Shadow Scene Builder and look at this, we've actually got 12 collections on here and these are our Shadow Scene Building stamps. So these are um, digital stamps that have the texture on them and if I click on Amber Glow, which is the first one, so it's in alphabetical order for you. So Amber Glow is, was our autumnal um, collection. You see here we've got all of these silhouette stamps. Now, when I say stamps, you'll see what I mean when I bring this over onto the page. We actually have some texture in there, so I'm going to enlarge this so you can actually see that we have the texture that actually looks like it's stamped onto paper. So you can see here, maybe we've not got a quite a perfect stamp, um, stamped image, but actually we've, I really, really love this particular texture because it gives us that authentic stamping look, but it means that we can do all kinds of um, scene building and masking and stamping techniques on a computer and print them out without the need to get your stamps out if you, um, if you missed out on the scene building stamps that we had on TV a little while ago. So I'm just going to delete that owl silhouette off the page. We also have, um, obviously we've got Believe in the Beauty, Bumblebee Barn, Cottonwood Clearing, End of the Lane, and each one of these has got lots and lots of different um, designs in there. So you can see Forgotten Corner with our Benji Bunny, pretty much the most popular um, Two Red Robins Darwin design that we've ever created. Um, Morning Delights, we've got Nature's Homestead, Summer Breeze, which is beautiful wildflowers, Twilight Moments, and then Waiting Out the Storm. So they're the 12 collections. We've also got scenes on here. So these are A4 pages that are ready to print out for you. So you can see there is a scene. I've just popped that onto the page. If we press print, that will actually print as it is. But what we can now do is we can go into the, um, into the shadow scene builders and we can go to Bumblebee Barn, for example. And in here, we've got a tractor. So we can bring on the tractor and we can start to build a scene, but out of silhouettes, which is really, really striking because we've got the pop of color in the background and we've got the um, the strength of the silhouettes in the front there. So you can see here, we can just resize by clicking and dragging the buttons in the corner. So when we click, bring an image onto the page, I'm going to delete that one, bring it back on. we bring an image onto the page, you'll see it appears on the page, it's quite large at the moment, so we don't want it that big because it's covering up all of the design. We click with our mouse over the top of the image we get um, boxes around the image. So you can see we've got eight boxes. We've got one in each corner, top and bottom and left and right. So we click and drag over the ones in the corners and it will make the image smaller or larger depending on if you drag towards it, it makes it smaller and away from the image makes it larger. You can see the exact dimensions we're working to. And if we use the top, bottom or left or right ones, we will actually um, compress the design. So it takes it out of proportion. Now that may be the look that you're going for there, where you can see it looks more like an old steam engine, but here is tractor. So this is how we can actually play and manipulate the images within Micro Studio. We can have them any size that we want. So we'll have a little small tractor in this one down at the front here. So, um, so we'll pop it just there, maybe shrink it a little bit more, pop that one on there. Now um, I'd like to get a tree for this particular design. So let's have a look where we've got one of those. So we've got cottonwood clearings, got some, some lovely grasses in there. So we've got, oh, we've got a nice, oh, lovely under the arch there. So we'll pop that one onto the page as well, but we'll put that one quite small and down towards the back. So we've got that in the distance there. So you can see we'll pop that over there. Maybe we'll pop it in front of the tree. So it's actually, we've got the trees coming through the design there. Um, or we can actually shrink it down and pop it over this side. So we can pop it over here. So it's just in the trees. And at the moment it's quite dark. So maybe we want to actually fade it down. I'm going to zoom into the page just so you can see a bit more detail. So I'm going to go down to the right hand corner and move the little slider bar across. Pull this one down so that you can see the detail here. What I want to do is fade this down because it's in the distance and I also want some of the green to show through. So we're going to click on the image. We're going to click on effects. I'm going to go to the opacity and the sliders. Now, every one of these sliders does something different to your images, and we'll get through some of those in this class. I'm going to use the opacity, and we're going to slide this to take the design down. And you'll see we're just softening it, and the green's actually coming through because we're making the image transparent. If I move this about, you'll see that it's lighter up there, it's darker down there, it's darker over here. But actually, if I pop this here and we've got the green showing through, that means it actually now looks as if it, it's tucked in the trees as well. So if we just soften it a little bit more, you can see that it looks like it's just it's just tucked away in the in the forest there. So it's just a little um, secret building that um, is just forgotten all about um, and we're just ready to explore. So I'm just going to keep looking to find a tree. So keep going down through here. 
And we've got all these, um, so many digital stamps on here, but these are digital stamps that are just, there's just that little bit different because we have the stamp texture, which is really, really unusual. Um, you know, it's, it's the first time we've actually created anything like this for you. And there's the tree that we were looking for. So here's our Ackley Birch from Twilight Moments. So I'm just going to pop the, zoom out of the page there. We're going to pop the silhouette down here and to make it a little bit bigger, We'll pop that just there, so it's just it's literally just growing out of this particular um, area of the ground. And what we can do now is we can crop the design. So if I click on the crop button up at the top, at the moment it's overhanging the edge of the page. It doesn't matter that it's overhanging the edge of the page, because if we print the design, remember everything that's on the white area is what we'll print. So it will actually, um, it will crop that anyway. But just because I want to see um, what I'm actually going to print when I'm working with the design, that's why I actually um, prefer to crop it anyway myself. So if I click on crop and just click onto the image, you'll see now it's flashed and the boxes around it have changed to blue. Now when we drag these ones into the, from the side, you'll see that we actually crop the design. We can press OK to um, confirm that that's the look that we're going for, or we can press cancel. If we press cancel, you'll see it takes it back. So you can see we've actually got the full tree back there. But if we, again, if we press crop and we click on the image, pull that edge in and then we press OK, you see that that part of the tree has disappeared. It hasn't disappeared forever, it is still there, so we can see it's still here over on the left hand side and it's still there ready for you to actually work with um, on an, a new project or we can actually add another one onto this project. So we'll pop a little one down here. Now remember what we said about the left, um, right, top and bottom buttons actually squishing your designs. So obviously in nature, nothing is ever identical. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to squish this tree in a little bit to make it a taller one. Maybe make it even smaller so it's a little sapling there. And then we'll just um, pop it just here so that we've got the detail showing through in between these two trees in the background. And you can see we've just added that detail just in there, just below this tree. Um, we also have our bunnies. We've got our um, owls and everything in here. Lots and lots of different designs. So we've got um, we've got ducks, we've got stags. So maybe we'll have some of these stags and deer over in the distance in this particular scene. So we'll pop these ones over here, and we'll pop them. Oh, we'll just cut. So we just need to paste. So we we'll cut them by mistake. So we we'll pop them in the distance. So we're going to make them quite small. Just pop them just over there. So they're just observing life, having a, a bit of a, a look around. Just bring them down just a little bit so that we're not losing the detail in the um, in the border there on the design. So you can see we've got them just there. We could pop them over by the tree actually if we wanted to. We pop them over there so make them even smaller so they're further off in the distance. Pop them there, and then we're going to get a let's find the bird to sit in the tree. So we're going to go back to our field of dreams, and we'll get. Buddy, who is one of our very first robins. So Field of Dreams was the first two Red Robins collection that we actually did. So you can see here, again, the texture detail within these particular stamps is, is incredible. So we've got the paper texture as if we've actually got a an ink pad that's maybe it's um, something like a stays on ink pad that's got the lines on it. And when it's a brand new fresh ink pad that's hardly been used, but then you stamped it onto paper as well. So you've got the paper texture on there as well. And I love the fact that we've got a little bit of a darker edge on these particular ones as well, which is um, which is really, really um, useful because it looks like we've inked the design and maybe we've not quite got the perfect stamp there. So we're going to pop this little robin in the tree. He's a little bit big there at the moment, so we shrink him down. Pop him just in the tree there. Maybe pop him a little bit further across so he doesn't look like he's just perched right on the edge. So we'll pop him there. And then we'll um, find what we're going to find now. So let's have a look in Forgotten Corner. And we'll just get some foliage to pop down at the bottom. So we'll get this here. We're going to right click and we're going to flip the design. We're going to have it so it's facing in this way in the, in the image. So we'll make that a little bit bigger down there. I'm just going to move the tractor over just a little bit. Shrink it down a bit more. Pop it over. Let's we'll have the tractor over there. Shrink it down a bit more. And I love the fact that we can do this with our scene building because we're actually creating our own totally bespoke design. So now at the moment, this is obviously still overhanging. So we're going to press that crop button, click on the image. And we're going to drag in this side and then we're going to drag up from the bottom. And then we press OK once we're happy with it. So we press OK, 
and then I'm actually going to fade this one down because I want a softer um, silhouette at this side so we're going to fade it down so we're going to go back to our effects tab use our opacity just like we did on the um, the cottonwood clearing section and we'll pop that just there like so we can add a sentiment to our designs as well using Micro Studio. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to save this design. So I'm going to click on Save As in the top left corner. I'm going to save it as, um, let's have a look. So I'm going to make a new folder in my documents and I'll call it Silhouette Scene. So that's my folder for saving my files in from this particular USB because when we open the save as box it defaults to my documents. You can save your files in um, on a USB if you wanted to. All you would do there is just change the area that you're saving them in in this box here. So we're going into silhouette scene and we'll call it um, tractor scene. So we'll save it there. Now I'm going to save it as a craft project which is an MCSX file which means that we can come back in later and we can take the tractor out we can, or we can change the tree, we can add another tree or we can change the scene in the background and move everything around if we wanted to. We're also going to save it as a JPEG file, which means that it's actually a flat file. So if I just save it as a JPEG and we'll call it tractor scene and we'll click on save there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete everything off the page. So I'm going to press select all and delete. I'm going to go to open here in the top left corner and you see we're back in that silhouette scene folder which we've created. So I'm going to click on there and click on open. So there's my file. So this is the MCS file. So the MCSX file you have to open from the open button in the top left corner. Now we can actually come in, we can delete the tractor, we can go back to files and we can pop, let's have a look. So we can change the, the tractor for forgotten Miss Daisy. You see we can pop a car in the middle of the field. I don't know why a car would be in the middle of a field, but it's entirely up to you. It's what we call creative license. So it's forgotten Miss Daisy. She's been she's been abandoned in a, in a field there. We'll pop her over by the tree if we wanted to. We can go to, um, let's have a look, we can go to Cottonwood Clearing and we can add the gate by, so the, well, the style by the front of the project here. Um, we can add some foliage. So we can add this down here so that it looks like a hedge. And if we shrink that down and then we right click and copy, right click and paste, we've pasted another one directly over the top. And you see here, here we've got that edge of the second one showing. And then if we just paste again, it will paste another one over the top. So there we've got a bit of a hedgerow going. I'm going to, um, I'm going to flip the middle one. So you can see here, we're going to go flip and we're going to flip it horizontal so that we go in that direction so that we've not got them all um, facing exactly the same way and we're going to squish it down a little bit and then this one here will squish it width ways so we've got a little bit of a differentiation there between the designs and there we've changed our design so now we can save again so we can press save as and we'll call it um, hedgerow because we've just created the hedge on that particular scene so with the um, mcsx file you can come back in you can edit it and you can change it and we can um, if we can even just delete the background, go back into scenes. Now we can select a different scene from in here. So we'll go with this one here. So we'll pop that one there and we'll right click, go to order and we'll send it backwards. Because if you remember at the beginning, I talked about this being your cutting mat and this being your, um, your stack of papers and stamps that you've got on your, in your craft room. What we've done now is we've lifted a sheet of paper from the drawer and we've popped it on top of our desk. But at the moment, it's gone on top of everything that we've created so far. So we just need to tuck it underneath. To do that, we go to order and we send it to the back. And there you can see we've just changed the design completely by changing the scene. We can save again. So we press save as. We'll call it hedgerow. Save as. And it says, are you sure? Because there's already a file called um, hedgerow. So yes, we want to over save it. And that's the new file that we've just created. So I'm just going to close that file and I'm going to say, yes, I want to close it. We're going to create a new one and you'll see that we have the grid and the ruler on there because they it will automatically default to the grid and ruler with any new project that we're creating. What I want to do now is show you the difference between the one that we've just worked with. So that was the MCSX file, which is the file that we've saved as an editable file. We also have in documents, which is where we created our silhouette scene um, folder. We have the tractor scene. 
So we have this one here. Now this is actually just one image. If I click on the tree, I move the file. If I click on the tractor, I move the file. And you can see there that this is just one solid image. But what we can now do is we can use this as a topper. So if I shrink this down, you can see here, this is now a topper for on a project. If I right click and copy and right click and paste, I have two on the page. If I jump over this side to the layers tab, so just above where we find all of our files, you can see we've got the tractor scene and we've got copy of tractor scene. So the file comes over and in the layers tab, you will see the name of the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch up the back one. So you can see here, we're just stretching it up and we're just pulling out the edge just a little bit. And if I go now to the effects tab and go to the brightness, and I slide this all the way across to the left, you can see we've created a black border around the design. So if I just shrink that one in a bit and shrink that one in a little bit, you can see we've got a border around there now. So that actually gives us a topper with a border for matting and layering on our project, which then means that we can actually start to build some designs um, where we can actually print and do some bulk, uh, some, um, some um, bulk card making. So if I group these two together at the moment, if I move this one, it moves both of them, it just moves the one and leaves that one there so they're not lined up anymore. Use that um, fabulous undo button, it puts it back in place. So I'm going to click and drag a box over both of the files that are on there. So you can see it's actually got two sets of boxes around it now. If I click on group, you see we've actually now got one set of boxes, which means those files are locked together. So if I click off and click back onto it, it's moving it as if it's one file. We can now right click and copy, right click and paste, and it will pop another one onto the page for us. And we can then click and drag a box over those and group, and then we can right click and copy, right click and paste. We do have the buttons up here for copy and paste as well. But then you can see here now, we've actually popped two on the page there. So we've actually got four toppers on a page. We've created our own topper sheet, which is totally unique to you. And we can actually come back in and go back into the, um, into the artwork. We can go into, let's go into Summer Breeze and we'll find a little bit of, um, let's have a look. So we'll go with, we've got all these beautiful wildflowers in here, but I'm actually gonna go with the wall here. So we're gonna pop a brick wall on this one up here. So you see we've got a bit of a wall there with the, the tractor in the background. So we're gonna shrink that down a little bit more right click copy right click and paste and we'll pop that one just over there and we'll stretch it just a little bit so that it actually covers the whole of the um, the bottom of the scene and then we're going to go to forgotten corner and we will pick let's have a look on here so we'll pick broken flame which is the incredible broken lamp shade there so we're going to pop that on here I'm going to pop this down here and I'm actually going to rotate it so it's just been abandoned down at the bottom, it's just been left in the in the field. We're going to shrink it down a little bit, pop it just down there. And then we'll go for the boot as well, which was, again, this was an incredibly popular die. I think it is retired now and I'm pretty sure it's sold out, but you actually have the, the silhouette for it on here. So we'll pop the boot on there. So maybe somebody's had a picnic and they've uh, they've had a bit of a party and they've left a couple of things behind, which is obviously not good, but with two red robins, mother nature takes over. So then we can bring the flowers on here and we can shrink down the dandelion and the dandelion can actually be growing out of the boot there. So if I just zoom into the page like this, you'll see that we've actually started to create a bit of a scene, a bit of a composition on here. So if I just move that a little bit and shrink it down a bit more, and then we can copy and paste. So we'll add another one onto there. And to flip this one, so I'm going to flip it horizontally. And you see the arrows when you flip actually show you which direction you're going to flip. So we're going to flip it horizontally and to squish it down a bit and pop it just over there. So now we've actually got the flowers growing out of the boot on that particular one. And what we'll do, we'll just add a sentiment onto one of the bottom ones. So we have the text tab up at the top. We click on text and we click on add text. So then when you put your mouse over the page, it changes to a cursor. So if you're working in a word processor, so we're going to put happy retirement on this one and we'll shrink that down a little bit. If we click off and back on, then we can move the text and we can change the font. So if we just double click onto the text, it highlights all of it. 
the fonts on in micro studio are determined by your computer so anything that's on your computer will appear in micro studio if you do have windows 11 you need to make sure that the fonts are in, um, installed for all users um, and there is a there is a way to actually select install for all users you don't actually have to um, install it multiple times um, but if you need any help with that just email us on help at highlightcrafts.com and we will send you some instructions on how to do that. I'm going to go with this particular font here and we'll pop that just up there. We can center the text if we choose to because we have all these buttons up here. We can um, right justify and left justify to so have those there and then I'm going to click the add text button next to word design on this particular one and we're going to click on again so it um, becomes a curse and we'll go happy birthday on this one so you see there we click off and we have uh, with word design we have shapes so we can actually make the text go around a circle so we we'll, actually I think I'll leave it as a circle and we'll rotate it around so that we've got happy birthday just like that and then we will get our let's go with Benji Bunny he's a little bit big to go in that sentiment at the moment so we're going to shrink him right down and pop him in the sentiment so he just sat on there and we'll go into um let's have a look let's go into twilight moments where we've got some more bunnies so we'll get our um, fluffle bunny here and we'll pop him just in there as well so we've got a couple of bunnies just inside the sentiment just there like so so you can see we just added some little extra silhouette detail on there and now we've actually got a page that we can save that's got four different toppers on it, which is all, all completely unique. But all of these layers that we've added on top can actually be switched off if we wanted to. We can still just print out the four scenes as they were originally by going into layers and clicking the layers off. So you can see all we're doing is clicking the little tick box beside each layer and it switches them off. And there you can see we've got all the scenes that we put on originally. So we can choose which layers we want to put back on so just click by the tick boxes again and if you wanted to switch off the backgrounds you can do that as well if you wanted to do that and then you, you, you've got the other option if you wanted to print, then print this onto acetate you know it's perfectly positioned to actually overlay over the top of your design so that's another option for you there so using the layers tab gives you a different um, set of options from um, printing a couple of different times and saving your files in different different methods so we're going to save as and we're going to call this um, topper sheet and we'll save that as an MCS file so that we can come back in and switch those layers on and off. That also means we can come back in and we can edit the text if we choose to. So we will now clear the page down. So I'm going to select all and I'm going to delete. So I'm going to go to files and now we're going to go and we're going to build another, another scene. So let's have a look. Um, Actually, the first thing I want to show you is that we can change the color of these stamps. Obviously, they are um, silhouette stamps, so they are all black at the moment. If I bring this poppy onto the page, you'll see there we've got a beautiful poppy. Um, it's it instantly identifiable as a poppy silhouette, so we can see that there. But I'm going to go to the effects tab. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is right click and copy and right click and paste on the flower. And you'll see why I've done that in just a second. So I'm going to click off and click on to make sure that I'm using the top layer. So I'm using the copy of Scarlet Petal. I'm going to go to the effects. Now, if I use the color sliders, which is how we change color, and we'll do that in a second with some of the backgrounds, nothing will happen with the black image because depending on your way of looking at it, black is technically not a color. It's either none of the color or all of the color. Um, so what we need to do is add some color in. So we go to the color boost and we can change any of the colors so you can see here we can add in red, we can add in green, or we can add in blue. Once we've added in some colour, we can then use the hue slider and make the stamp any colour that we like. We can also use the brightness slider to make it pastel, we can make it darker and more dual tone as well. So we've got thousands and thousands of digital ink pads built into the graphics programme for you. So I'm going to leave this one as red for now. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you how we use the scissors tool. So remember, we've got another one of these poppies directly underneath. So if I use the scissors tool, I'm going to cut the head of this poppy off. So we're going to click on the scissors and you'll see the image fades out. And we're going to click now. Every click with the mouse is now a snip with a pair of virtual scissors. So we're going to click and then we're going to click here and just click on this section here. Now I'm going to click around the stem of the flower 
doesn't matter that I'm coming outside the edge of the image and it doesn't matter that I'm not going right up to the edge of the image because it's a transparent image. So it actually, um, it doesn't actually matter on this particular one. When we get back to the beginning, the line changes to blue and then the red area that's selected changes. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna keep the outer. So we can keep the inner or we can keep the outer and that keeps everything either inside or outside of the, um, the blue area. So you see, if I keep the inner, it keeps the red stem. If I keep the outer, it keeps the red flower head. So I'm going to click that. And now we've actually got a red poppy on a black stem. So what we're going to do now is going to go to the layers tab. And when I click on the scarlet petal, the original one, which is the bottom layer, go to the effects. And now we're going to add in some green. And we've actually got a red poppy with a green stem. So if I zoom into that, you'll see that we've got the detail of that there. In fact, I'm gonna brighten that. So I'm just gonna lift that stem just a little bit. And I might actually just brighten the, um, the flower as well. So we'll just lighten that a little bit. Maybe we'll um, go a little bit more saturated with that one to make it a bit more vibrant red. But there you can see we actually look like we've done some, some stamping with, um, with a couple of ink pads on the same stamp. Um, so just another little technique for you to use with these digital stamps and again I love the fact that we've got this texture in these I think it's so so it's the first time I've actually seen um, the texture built into the digital stamps usually they're a solid silhouette which um, which doesn't give this effect it doesn't give the stamping effect that we've actually got on this particular USB so we're going to select all and delete we're going to clear the page down I'm going to show you a little bit of what else is actually on the USB because we've not looked at a huge amount of everything else that's on here so have a look at the background builder. In here, we've got landscape skies and structures and foliage. So you can see we've got landscapes here. With the landscapes, those are all different sections from the scenes that we had. So if I bring on this one here, you'll see it's just the bottom section. I'm going to zoom out of the page and pop this down towards the bottom of the page there. And then I'm actually, I'm going to stretch it up a little bit as well because with this particular area of the USB, we can distort these designs. And because of them being watercolor texture, it changes the perspective of the hills and the designs, but it actually doesn't act, um, do it to any detriment of the actual, um, the actual scene that we're creating. So I'm going to bring this one on now, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to order, and I'm going to send it to the back. And you'll see that we're actually starting to build our own landscape. And this is part of the scene that we were just building that particular silhouette um, topper on. But we've actually now we've just got the, um, we've got the trees, the grass, but we actually popped it behind this particular scene here. What we need now is some sky. So we're going to go to the skies section and we've got a few different ones. So let's have a look at this one here. So we'll pop that one there. And we'll just stretch it down a little bit so it goes behind those trees and we'll go right click order and we'll send that to the back so you can see we've got the sky there but we can also have this one here if we wanted to so we can have a brighter sky so if I again if I stretch this down because we've got some transparent areas just around this tree line here so just pulling it down so it covers that right click order and then I'm going to send it backwards rather than send it to the back because at the moment it's the, um, if I send it to the back, it would go behind the other layer that we'd actually put for the sky. So you can see we've got a couple of different options there. We've also got this one here, which is a little bit more of a gray, um, a bit more of a stormy sky, so a bit more moody. So we're gonna stretch this one down again, right click, order, and we'll send it backwards and send it backwards again so that we've gone back behind both of the front two layers. And look at that, the difference in that one. Now we look like we've got, um, we're at dusk and we're actually starting to create some, some scenes where we can bring those owls in. Absolutely beautiful. If I go back to the layers tab, you'll see we've got three different skies on here at the moment. So we've got the three different options there for this scene that we've created. But what we can also do is we can go back to our landscapes and we can swap the, um, the bottom area for this one here which if I just shrink that down a little bit there, so shrink it down to the size of the page, pop that one down there and stretch that one up and then click on that layer and switch that one off. You see, we've got another different look. So we've got a bit of a watery scene down at the bottom there, or we can actually bring this one in, which has got a little bit of, um, 
so we've got some structure in here. So we've got trees, we've got um, we've got a, a house, a cottage in there as well. So we've got all those options as well. So we could have that down at the front. And then we've also got um, this one here, which is more of a flat um, design. So if I delete that one that we'd got on there and switch on the layer that we switched off, you'll see this one has actually got the, um, the detail of the hedgerow there, which is actually turned into hills, by the way, that we've stretched it. But this one here has more of a flat area, so we can actually pop this one on and we can squish it down and we'll actually start to create a little um, footpath down at the front here. So you can see we're actually building lots and lots of depth and dimension into our scenes. And again, at any point I can switch one of these skies off and have the other one on there. Um, and again, we can save this file. So we're going to go save as and we'll save it as our scene builder file. We, again, we can because I've saved that as a, a Minecraft Studio file, we can come back in later and we can change it. So I'm just going to delete everything off the page. And then we'll have a quick look at the textures. So if I bring on this one here, you'll see we've got this beautiful, beautiful texture. We've got lots of different colours here. If we wanted to change the colour, we go to the Effects tab and we go to the Hue slider and it will change it to shades of red, shades of green. We've got 360 different colours in there. We also have the rainbow slider, so you can see we're actually kaleidoscoping the colours. And you can see there we've got green and blue, we've got purple and blue there, we've got pink and purple. And then right back to the beginning, we've got the original colourway. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to use our digital punches. So if I come up to the top of the page and select a digital punch, so we're going to go with our circle because it's just the, um, the easiest one for me to show you this technique with. So we're going to go with this one here. And we're going to select keep inner or keep outer in the same way as we did with the scissors. The digital punch is a transparent blue image, which means that we can actually select um, the inside or the outside. So we're going to keep the inner of this one. So we're going to get rid of everything that's outside of it. OK, so I'm going to undo moving it because I need to leave it in place, actually. So we're going to put it back there. I'm going to go to digital punch and we will keep the inner. I'm going to switch off the digital punch layer. And then we're going to go to the circle. We are going to copy and paste. So we've now brought another circle on straight over the top. And we're going to bring on another digital punch of a circle. So we're going to pop that one just up here. So we'll pop it just here like so. So maybe shrink it down a little bit. And when I press keep out, it will look like nothing's happened because at the moment we're punching out of this layer. So I'm going to switch off the one underneath just for now. And I'm going to select keep, um, keep outer because I want to get rid of this little chunk that's within this particular circle. So we're going to keep the outer. So you can see we've actually got rid of that chunk there. So if I now click back on number eight, which is the original layer, it looks like nothing's happened. But if I fade that down using the opacity, I need to make sure I've selected that layer. Fade that one down and you'll see that we've actually started to create a moon in the scene there. So we're actually going to build a little bit of a scene on here now. So we're going to go to files and we're going to pull, pull some of the scene building in. So we're going to go to nature's homestead and we'll grab the Oscar, the flying owl. So we'll pop him into, so he's flying across the moon. So we'll pop him there just like so. So he's just coming just across the edge of the moon there. And we'll get some um, beautiful foliage in here as well. So um, we'll go with that one. Maybe we'll want a little something a little bit finer. So let's go to, um, let's have a little believe in the beauty. Yeah, so we've got our overgrown there. So we'll pop some of that down here. Um, we'll uh, maybe shrink that down just a little bit. So it's just overhanging there. I'm going to go to um, Forgotten Corner. And we'll add in some of our ferns again that we added into the first one, but we're going to shrink them right down on this one. So we're going to pop them just there. Copy and paste. Bring this one up down here. I'm going to squish it and then I'm going to flip it so that it looks different. So it just gives us, again, a point of difference between the two particular elements there. And then we're going to go with a little bit more foliage along the bottom. So we're going to go to, um, let's have a look, well, we've got Morning Delights. We've got so much variety in here. It's just absolutely amazing. So we'll go to, let's have a look, End of the Lane. Got some ivy in there. We'll go with a little bit of a thistle coming up here. 
So again, I'm going to shrink that down a bit. Um, we'll go for, there we go. So we'll go Summer Breeze and we'll grab our Meadow Geranium. So that's going to fill this little gap just here. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to digital punch all of these elements, but at the moment I'd have to do them all individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Layers tab. I'm going to switch off the two circles. Remember, we've still got our digital punch circle there. So that's still there and it's still exactly the same size. We haven't changed the size of it. What I'm also going to go do is go to the Brushes tab. I'm going to make the white page disappear. So we're going to make the white area disappear. So we're going to go to Constants. I'm going to select transparent. So this box here has now gone the same color as the graphics program because it is now transparent. So if we press set and we now save this as a PNG file, so we go to home and save as, we're going to save this as a PNG file, not saving it as a JPEG because a JPEG would be a full solid scene like the one that we created earlier. So this is going to be our silhouette scene. So save that. We're going to make the page white again and press set as you can see there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to files. Well, actually, I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to switch these layers on. And I'm going to switch the silhouettes off because we don't want those ones. I'm going to go back to files and I'm going to go to documents, which is where we've just saved it. So in documents, we've got our silhouette scene and I've called it silhouette scene there. So you can see here. And what I've done, because I actually saved it um, the right size for the file, you can see here we've actually got that there now, so we can position that wherever we want it. And when we go back to the layers, we can switch back on the digital punch, which is the circle, and then we can right click and bring that to the front. And then we can go back to digital punch tab, we can select keep inner, and then we've actually got rid of those areas that are overhanging, and we've done some digital masking with our own scene, which we've just created using um, the graphics program, but we've actually mixed and matched across the different collections, brought these in, and those layers are still there. So if I switch that one off and switch these ones back on, they are still there. So when I save this file, I'll be able to go in and I'll be able to swap the flowers out if I want to, but I have that one there perfectly positioned over the top and ready to go for my, for my printout. But this then means that it looks like I've done a lot of inking in the background. I've done some masking to create the moon. And then I've also done some masking with my stamping techniques there. But we've actually created that in just a few moments in Minecraft Studio. And that's the beauty of the graphics program. So I do hope that you've enjoyed this um, particular class and I do thank you for joining me. If you do have any questions then um, let us know on um, help at highlightcrafts.com and we'll get back to you. Um, but yeah please share in the Micro Studio Facebook group um, everything that you've done or the Highlight Crafts official Facebook group, anything that you create with this one. I'd love to see your interpretation of this particular USB. Um, and yeah once again thank you for joining me and I will see you again next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. And click the bell icon to receive notifications of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video, or click here to see more videos like this one.